Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now, when we left off, we were on a bit of a recruiting spree. You know, I wanted to get a couple more Kurgit Lancers and, uh, you know, just in general, shore up our army and make sure that we had a bit of a B team in the back, just to make sure that if we do get defeated at one point or another, we're able to get back in the action really, really fast. And mostly I just wanted to get more Kurgit Lancers. And I've been trying to do that. As you can see here, I have about 20 Kurgit Lancers now. I think I had about, what is it now? Five, I think, when we left off. And I also have a bunch more Kurgit Horsemen. But obviously the Kurgit Horsemen are far, far below the standard of the Kurgit Lancers because, well, the Lancers just have much better equipment in general. But anyway, otherwise, I've taken some, well, I've taken some more Swadians. I've leveled them up as well. We do have 17 of those. Hopefully they're going to level up pretty nicely. I've also taken some Swadian sh Sharpshooters because... Well, you never know when you're going to need some range units, but primarily what I'm trying to do right now is just level up our Kurgit Horsemen. And to do that, we're going to fight this guy. Yeah, we're going to fight this guy. Come on, Lord Gamal, get him. Yes, good work. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to see right there. Lord Gamal actually doing something useful. Fantastic. Okay, so apart from that... We have leveled up. We did level up in the previous episode. I have not done anything about that just yet because I wanted to, you know, actually record it, you know, and, and discuss with you what we think is a good idea and, you know, what, you know, what kind of skills are going to be cool to take and all that sort of thing. But obviously, I can't hear you and you can't really hear me at the moment, so we can't really converse. But hopefully, you're going to be able to send me those psychic brainwaves and we're going to be able to find out together what is a decent enough skill and attribute points and all that sort of thing to go into. I'm thinking it's probably going to be power draw because that's what I was doing, but well, we're going to we're going to see. We're going to see what happens there. It's probably going to be power draw. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. All right, so I'm just going to take these guys out, I guess. I mean, there's not really much more for me to say about this with the exception of the fact that I hope that we don't lose too many Kurgit Horsemen, because I spent quite a bit of time recruiting them, and then leveling them up, obviously, because leveling them up basically just requires me to wait at some town for a bit, and just wait for my trainer skill to do its job, because newsflash, I don't really want to run around with some low-tier units and try and fight things. If I can, I'm going to fight a vassal and see if I can get level ups that way, like, for example, what I'm doing right now, but... When they're very low level, like recruits and tribesmen and things like that, it's highly inadvisable not to do that. I mean, you can level those guys up really, really fast with trainer skill anyway, so it's not really necessary to, you know, put yourself in harm's way and maybe, just maybe get yourself taken prisoner if something goes, goes wrong. And, oh yeah, also we have a slight issue at the moment in our territory. King Graveth is running around. King Graveth of the Rodox. He is attempting to raid as many villages as possible and that is making things very very difficult for us to be able to recruit units and of course that's exactly what he wants to do he wants to prevent us from being able to field large amounts of units in our armies and that's generally the main reason why i would recommend if you are playing this for the first or maybe even second time and if you're if you're a little bit newer to the game than perhaps some of you are, then if you're a little bit newer, then what I'd recommend is if you are swimming in money like we are right now, because it's quite easy to make money in native and in certain mods, but in general, once you have a bunch of enterprises and things like that, it's really easy to stockpile a bunch of money as we have right now. But yeah, anyway, point is, once you have a bunch of money, it's probably advisable to garrison your town or your castle or whatever you may own with as many units as possible. Even if they are the lowest level units ever, it is just a good idea to have a bit of a stockpile so that if you do get defeated or if your villages do get raided, that you have a bit of a fallback. You know, you have a bit of a, a backup in the case of that happening. Because if that happens, if all of your villages are raided and you have no units to fall back on and all of all of the units in your garrison are just useless and, and things that you don't really want to use and th that are a bit ineffective then you're stuck and you're going to be a bit screwed for a bit until your your villages become unraided again but 
yeah, it's kind of a cool idea to just stockpile a bunch. I really should have been stockpiling a bit more, but, you know, as we've been fighting the... What is it now? Who, who are we fighting again? I, I know we're fighting the Rodox... Uh, Sar Saranids. Saranids, yes, of course. Yes. Anyway, the point is... As we've been fighting the Saranids, yes, they were very important in my mind there, weren't they? Yes, I completely forgot that they even existed. Fantastic. But anyway, the point is, is that if you're going to do something like that, if you, have, if you have your own faction, then I'd highly recommend if you have a lot of money to just stockpile a bunch. And I mean, personally, I'd probably be able to afford a garrison of probably 3,000 units or something like that. If you have the the time and the inclination, you can very easily stockpile that many units in, well, I don't know. It really depends. You're probably going to take quite a long time to be able to do that because the villagers obviously take a little bit of time to restore themselves. But for the most part, you can probably get about 100 units every two days. Mm, no, I'm, no, no, probably 100 units every four days because you have to run around and things, and that obviously takes time. So, yeah, I was thinking mainly of the, the village restoration times, but you've got to think of the travel times as well, and that's obviously a bit of a problem, especially if you get, you know, if you get preyed upon or whatever. But, yeah, if you have about 116 like I do right here, if you have 115 capacity, then... I'd recommend taking about 20 high tier cavalry units if you have them. Otherwise, just take some high tier units, whatever they may be. Just take some high tier units. And I'd recommend probably infantry or cavalry, personally. But yeah, and then just go around and recruit as many as you can. And then just put those in the garrison. And your trainer skill is going to do the rest. And you can even swap them out and do a little bit of higg higg higgledy piggledy, jiggery pokery, you know, hocus pocus <laughs> sort of thing. And you can swap them into your army for a little bit. Get them one tick of trainer. That will level them up to the next tier instantly. I mean, just look at this. That was my trainer skill right there. My trainer skill just leveled up these horsemen and this man-at-arms. And I mean, I'm just going to wait here, actually. I'm just going to wait here just so that I can demonstrate the power of the tra trainer skill. Because it is really, really good. And I don't even have the greatest trainer skill at the moment. I mean, yes, I have Lezalit with trainer skill, and I have a, a couple of other companions that also have trainer skill, which does make a difference to how much experience you gain, because trainer skill is actually one of the party skills that stacks. And I don't know whether a lot of people know that or not. I mean, I do get a couple of questions about that every now and again. And yeah, it's kind of cool to let you know. So yeah, trainer skill stacks. Even if it is a bit of a diminishing return, I don't know whether it is. I don't know the exact formula behind it, but I just know that trainer skill stacks. So if your companions have trainer skill and you have trainer skill, then it's going to add up, which is pretty cool. But as you can see, look at that. We had seven Kurgid Horsemen ready to level up, and now we have 15. That is really cool. It's taking a lot longer for our Man at Arms to level up, as you can see, so that's exactly the reason why a couple of episodes back I was actually talking about the efficiency ratios between leveling up Swadian Man at Arms to Swadian Knights and leveling Kurgit Horsemen up to Kurgit Lancers, because they just take so much longer. And of course, because of that formula that someone actually pasted in the comments section, I think he pasted a multiplicative formula surrounding the experience gain that you get if you don't level up your units. If you don't upgrade, for example, if I don't upgrade these guys, apparently, according to that formula, apparently it does increase the speed at which your units gain experience. Now, I'm not entirely sure on the whole specifics of it because I can't quote verbatim the, you know, the actual comment right now, but I, I just seem to remember that it is actually pretty good yeah it's actually pretty good to leave your units to upgrade so don't just upgrade one by one by one leave them for a little bit just until you have well how, how many am i going to be getting about 22 21 or something like that yeah so i'm going to leave them until they're about that until you have to fight and then level them up and then they're going to be getting even more experience at that at that point so that's pretty cool in my opinion I'm going to wait here for some time, there we go, until we can level those up. Yeah, there you go, 23. So, did you see that? Did you notice that the experience has actually gone up? So, for example, my first tick of trainer, okay, that gave me seven 
Kurgit lancers to level up. And then the next tick gave us 15, so that has already done over double the amount, because if it was just a flat base value, it would have gone 7, 14, 21, but it's gone 7, 15, 23. So in actual fact, leaving units to level up until you need them is probably the way to go. So I'm going to be leveling these guys up now because I actually do need them. And we're going to go into Uxkal and see what we can do. So hopefully that's been a little bit interesting for some of you. Unfortunately, I don't have the exact formula. But if the person that actually had that formula and did paste it in the comments, if you want to paste that again, then I'll pin it or whatever. And then people can find it and all that wonderful stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can probably find it by searching, you know, with your with your search engine, whatever that may be. And yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I think that is a pretty cool sort of hidden little little tidbit there. And it was uh, it's very useful, actually. It's very useful. OK, so we have literally only Jeremus here. <laughs> oh, no, uh, this is probably not good because yeah, I probably should have taken a couple more archers, shouldn't I? Because in general, this siege is actually pretty good for archers. So, yeah, probably would have been a better idea for me to do that. And also, it would have been a good idea for me to level myself up, wouldn't it? Yeah, probably. Okay, well, I'm going to try and kill as many of these guys as I can. Yeah, this is the hilarious thing. I say as many of these guys as I can. I'm still killing the one guy. Yes, still killing the one guy. Okay, well, at least my units at the very front are doing a good job. They seem to be actually killing them really nicely here. It seems like the Saranids only have regular footmen and veteran footmen remaining. They don't seem to have any Mamluks at the top there this time, which was the main reason why we were having difficulties beforehand. So that's obviously quite a big deal. But other than that, I think it's actually about time that we level ourselves up. So as you can see here, we do have power draw. Going to be going for another point in intelligence so that I can get another point in power draw. And then if I want to, I can spec into other things like I can get another point in trainer skill. I think that would probably be a good idea. But at the moment, I think power draw is really kind of our necessity at the moment as well as leveling up our proficiency too. Because eventually we're going to be an absolutely dead eye with a bow, hopefully. There we go. Do you see the difference? Yeah, you see, look at that. You see the difference. It's crazy. Wow. OK, I I knew that power draw made a difference, but I didn't think it would make that much of a difference. But literally, wow, we were able to get two kills in three shots. Now, that's nice. If ever I saw it. Very, very nice. OK, now I'm just looking for more units. No. Yes, I'd like more units to shoot, please. If at all possible, I would like that. Who's that? That's nothing. That's a stick. <laughs> That's a stick. Yes. Who's that? You there. You're trespassing. Oh, you're a stick. Should have gone to spec savers. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. For those of you that are in the UK, I think you'll probably get that. I don't know whether anyone else will get that. It's a reference. I don't know whether you have spec savers in your perspective. Perspective. Perspective? Eh. Respective? Yeah, whatever. In your in your specific country, I don't know whether you have spec savers over there, but if you do, then I, I guess you kind of know the the slogan. Anyway, it seems like we are actually doing a really nice job right now. We've only lost 27, but that could change very quickly if the enemy receives an extremely, extremely good wave of units. I'd like to be able to get in there if possible. So what I'm actually going to try and do is I'm actually going to tell my units to sort of hold back a little bit because I'd like to get in there. And if we can do that, we can probably support the units in there a lot better than the current units can. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Obviously, I am putting myself in harm's way this time. So obviously, it's going to make a bit of a difference to if we actually succeed in this case. But as you can see, look at look at the amount of damage we're able to do. We're, we're able to do some pretty decent damage. I am taking a little bit of damage, though, which is not good. I would like to be able to get inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. We're inside. Oh yeah, that's what we like. Okay, so now if I can just kill this Mamluk, or at the very least, just get him out the way, that would be nice. Yeah, all these Mamluks, wow, all these Mamluks, they are very, very powerful with their maces. Their maces can crush through blocks, you see, so that's the main reason why we need to be a little bit careful about them. But 
thankfully, it seems like they're just allowing me to go one-on-one -on -one with that Master Archer, and hopefully I'll be able to kill this guy. Knowing me, I'm probably going to get killed by this skirmisher by, like, a, a thrown weapon headshot or something like that. Jump and slash! Yeah, there we go, we took him down. Alright, so, here we go. Let's see how much damage we're able to do now. We killed a Saranid guard, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah, against Saranid Mamluks, we're not really able to deal that much damage still. But against other people that are much lighter armored, yeah, we're actually able to do some pretty decent damage. Not bad. As you can see, look at that. 48 damage with a headshot, 43 damage with a headshot. That's nice. That is nice. Yeah, give me those points. Give me those proficiency points. That's what I like to see. Okay, so now I can finally head in here and maybe I'll pick up some more arrows from the archer that I just killed back there if we need them. We might need them. It really depends. At the moment, not so much. We don't really need anything. But let's see. Is there are there any are there any arrows here? Any quivers? Uh, there might be one from this guy. Ah, arrows. Yeah, yeah. Twenty six. Nice. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted. But the thing with that is that I don't think there are any more enemies. No, there's one more enemy. <laughs> yeah, there's one more enemy. So we don't particularly uh, don't particularly need them, but. Oh, are you serious? One of my Kurgit Lancers literally fell off the wall and... Yes, they're all falling off the wall and dying. That is hilarious. Well, that one didn't die, but almost. Almost. Okay, so we lost 17 of our Kurgit Lancers. That's painful, but as you've seen, they are very easy to level up. So, I guess I'll just be going back there and doing a little bit of that in my off-screen time if I can. And otherwise, I don't even know what to take here. I guess I'll just take some more Kurgit Horsemen, Kurgits, Kurgits, Kurgits. I actually like the Kurgits quite a bit now, now that I've found out that the Kurgit Lancers are really good in sieges as well as field battles. I mean, obviously they're not as good as Nord Huskals and things like that. And they're probably not as good as infantry in general, but they do the job, you know? They do the job. And if you want to be as powerful on the fields of battle as you are in a siege, or, should I say, a little bit more powerful in a field battle, because obviously, you know, cavalry does have a rather decisive advantage. Going to take a manhunter here and a watchman, I think. But, yeah, if you want to do that, then the Kurgit Lancer is the unit you want to look for. Alright, so I have seen Lord Talbar running around quite a lot, and I'm going to give this to him. Lord Tarchius has increased. Oh, that's awesome. That is really, really cool. Unfortunately, I have been neglecting Lord Akadan, and Lord Akadan is now at zero relation, so obviously that is a bit of a problem. Yes, I say a bit of a problem. It's actually a big problem, but yes, we've given him a town, and hopefully Lord Talbar will be pretty good as a result of that. We have minus four at Uxkar here. I'm going to try and improve my relation with them a little bit. There we go. Got minus three now. That's hilarious. Okay, so I'm going to wait here for some time. Let's see whether anyone decides to retaliate against us. It's quite likely that King Graveth will turn up here, because obviously Uxkar, I believe, didn't that used to be... I don't think that used to be Rodox. I think that used to be Swadians, and then the Rodox took it, or then the Nords took it or something. I can't remember the history. I can't remember the history of all these fiefs and all the various, you know, battles and engagements and situations that went on. But at one point or another, Uxkar has been owned by a numerous amount of factions. So, yeah, there we go. There's another 18,000. Oh, wait. Yes. I forgot. I want to look for... Uh, I want to look for the military cleaver. By the way... If you're going to use a two-handed weapon, I highly recommend using a Bardiche. I love the Bardiche when I'm playing native multiplayer at any point. Like, I've played it in the past very, very sparsely. And if I do play it, then Bardiche is my weapon of choice just because it is really, really cool and fun to use. Actually, if you're going to play full invasion or you're going to play the invasion mode, then the Bardiche is in my opinion, really cool. Obviously, you don't have a shield or anything, but it can kill basically anything. It takes, you know, it, it does damage to cavalry really, really nicely. It's able to, you know, destroy shields really, really nicely as well. But obviously, it depends on the situation, and you do need to adapt a little bit when you're playing in that sort of environment. But anyway, I kind of like the, I kind of like the Bardiche. 
That is probably my favorite two-handed weapon with the exception of maybe a nice two-handed mace. If there's a nice two-handed mace with, you know, pretty decent amount of speed, then that is really pretty cool because you can always crush through blocks with those and crushing through blocks is my favorite attribute of a weapon. It's just really, really fun. Okay, who's that? That is King Graveth. He is traveling to Suno, however, so I don't need to worry about him. That's nice. There's three Swedian Knights, ten more Kurgit Lancers. You can just see that these guys are leveling up so, so easily. It's really, really fun to watch. Okay, more camp followers, more slave drivers, more watchmen, all that sort of thing. Okay, fantastic. There you go. All right, we're well on our way to one million dinars as well, and we are also well on our way to almost eliminating the Saranids. So a quick look over the map. And then, ah, they've taken Tyr as well, haven't they? As well as Curin Castle. Well, technically, they didn't take it, but I suppose they have a defector of sorts. So maybe we're going to have to go over there and see what's going on. But I'd love to be able to eliminate one of these towns. I think Cherise is the weakest, so maybe we'll be doing that. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.